Well, it's a great pleasure to welcome Axis to What's Next and uh, someone who's no stranger to the channel. We've spoken before about the latest trends. Jacques Malherbe is the CTO of Axis and Jacques, it's great to see you again. Um, and it's great to see the market starting to pick up now. Hey, I mean, uh, it was an interesting period. The last time I chatted to you, there was a lot of, uh, you know, buzzing and people were trying to digitize and do all sorts of things. It's still happening, uh, but there's quite a bit of buoyancy in the market as, as well now. Are you picking up the same thing, Jacques? Absolutely, Aki. I think that's uh, quite a bit of pent-up demand out there. Uh, there are people making plans. Uh, there are a lot of uh, budget shuffling going around. And we're all trying to cope with, uh, you know, the, the lack of supply. Uh, that we that we are certainly constrained in the supply side. But having said all of that, there is... A much more stable market and uh, we're kind of finding our way in this market and people are, are again uh, activating a lot of plans that were put to bed during the during the pandemic yeah or to, during the lockdown at least well that's fantastic and i guess this digitization process is not ending um, and, you know, we're all looking at new ways of optimizing and adding that agility. One of the, the, the buzzwords that's out there at the moment is the new edge that people are talking about, the distributed edge, uh, there's many industry people are referring to. And I guess that, you know, we've, you know, it's a decentralization of the data center. The data center can't do everything, Jacques. Um, uh, so what exactly is the edge? Yeah, it's it's one of those funny uh, you know concepts that's come along, and then we take months to figure out what it meant, or what what it was intended to mean. The reality of it is that the internet, uh, as it is, and the data center, as it is, can't cope with what we want to do. Um, uh, it's a centralized model, and it means that every every uh, component on the uh, that interacts with the center uh, needs to traverse a network and then interact with the center. Uh, do what it has to do, and then download uh, information again and, and repeat that process a million times a day. Uh, when we talk about anything autonomous or intelligent at the edge, then uh, there's enough of uh, computing power, there's enough memory, there's enough intelligence at the edge to make decisions at the edge and not necessarily consult with the center. Mm. Um, and so this whole edge now uh, is coming to the rescue of autonomous vehicles. Uh, decisions need to be made instantly on the edge. We can't wait, we can't, we can't uh, cope with the latency that's introduced into that conversation uh, and, the, and the lateness, if I can call it that, of the decision. And so hence, uh, we're seeing a whole move in terms of moving uh, intelligence to the edge. And that's not only processing intelligence, but it's also connectivity intelligence. How do we connect? Um, what happens if there has to be a failover? What happens if we, uh, we uh, overuse the capacity? Uh, how do we cope with all of these things that are happening at the edge that traditionally were just a networking issue with the center? And so that is dispersed everywhere. Um, everybody is now sitting at home working, just as an example. Yes. So the whole configuration and traffic patterning and everything is different now from where it was a year ago and drastically different from where it was five years ago. And so we need to cope with that now. And so the architecture of how we do things and how do we move traffic and how we pattern traffic uh, is totally different now. Okay. So, I mean, when you look at it, Jacques, um, and, and you look at connectivity technology, so how are those connectivity technologies being reinvented to enable the new edge. Uh, I guess that you've got to reconfigure some things there. And I mean, you look at uh, 5G and you look at how that's, you know, gaining quite a bit of adoption. So, so, so how, do you, how, how do you talk about those technologies in this edge computing environment that we're in? Yeah, I think we, without getting, you know, without diving into bits and bytes, but yes, yes, there's some realities to what, when we see these, things move. Firstly, between 3 and 4G, and 4G and 5G, there's a world of difference between those technologies. Those are not very simple little hops that happen, or it's not a simple idea of pushing more bits through a pipe. Uh, it's got to do with the architecture itself and how it handles traffic and, and what it does with traffic. Yes. Now, 
<coughs> you might you might remember when we started when the topic of conversation in the networking world was the software defined network or yes. software defined WAN, SD WAN. And what we were saying is that we are taking control of the traffic through software and we're going to manage and manipulate uh, and control the traffic through software. And so we'll have very simple hardware devices, but we're not going to build uh, the old fixed line routed network. We're going to use the internet as a transport mechanism for us to connect branches. And so we did that and it worked very well and it's still working very well and it's still growing uh, at a tremendous pace. But somewhere in that uh, uh, converse, conversion to software defined WAN, um, we discovered that it's not secure enough. Uh, we need to do something with the security. We discovered that uh, we want to talk into a hybrid world where we not just want to connect our branch, but we want to connect our branch to cloud. And we want to talk to cloud. So now this whole network starts moving differently. And hence the, uh, hence the evolution, the 5G evolution. The 5G evolution is going to accommodate this thing we call SASE, another new name, <laughs> the secure uh, access services edge. And so that's something different that's coming our way in terms of how we architect our network. Firstly, to be safe uh, and secure. Secondly, to go anywhere we want it to go, whether it's cloud or branch connectivity or just allowing the world into our, into our, into our network and into our uh, assets. So, so all of that is just a, re a rework happening and, and 5G is certainly one of the answers. But the second one that's super important to realize is that that edge is now mobile as well. Uh -huh. The user, the user is mobile, so they keep on moving around. It's not a, a static place. So we have Wi-Fi, we have a tower, we have something on our roof, we have an AP in our room, and we all sit in one place and work. Suddenly, this connection is in a bus, um, and that bus is driving around, and we need to provide exactly all the stuff and the features that I just mentioned, but in a mobile fashion. You make it so easy to understand, Jacques. Thank you. Um, I, I, I now get it. Um, and I guess it's all, it's, it's, it's all evolution, right? We, we need to adapt because you've That's got right. all these different technologies that are all being used to do the same thing. And you obviously have to adapt and you have to take security very seriously as well. So if you could yeah. describe to me the, the, the play or the strategy that Access is building, to participate in this trend, and I know that you guys are right at the edge of the trend and the latest stuff that's happening out there, because it's what your customers want. So how are you adapting and participating in this particular trend, Jacques? Yeah, there's, there's, there's two ways to describe it, mate. When we, when we started talking about cloud 10 years, 15 years ago, uh, people asked, but where is the cloud? And the answer was not yet. That was the answer. So where is it? It's not yet. So that gave, that kind of broke open the concept of it can be it can be somewhere else. I'm talking to something that is somewhere else, an asset or information that's somewhere else. If we say, well, where's the edge? The answer is everywhere. Um, so a cloud is not here, and edge is everywhere. And so that's that's the the short answer. The short answer now is people and things connect from anywhere. Now. In the, in, in the traffic management world, if you have unlimited bandwidth, then we're not concerned about management because we just pump it through a massive pipe. We've got lots of massive pipes, but that's not the case. We don't have massive pipes. And so we have to treat traffic differently now, and it's called network slicing. So we will now look at traffic that uh, comes from the edge, and if that traffic is coming from a sensor, then we have to treat it differently than it comes from an autonomous car that you can't, you can't have a break, you can't have a latency. So we treat it different. We treat it differently from somebody's watching Netflix. So there's different ways that we treat these traffic uh, loads um, and 5G's architecture is built to accommodate that slicing of the network. Okay. And that again has got to do with uh, and that's what makes it different from 4G. 4G, we can't do the slice. So uh -huh. 5G allows us to do the slice. 
4G was going like, give them bandwidth. They want to they wanna talk a lot. They want to send WhatsApp and they want to uh, watch Netflix or watch video. So it's a multimedia uh, bandwidth. And now we suddenly say, no, 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 that's not indiscriminate bandwidth. It's definite bandwidth that's designed specifically for what's happening at the edge that is so critical now, uh, remote medical. Uh, you know, uh, certain observations that we do, video, security, uh, yes. as I said, autonomous everything. It's not just cars, it's buses, it's trucks, it's mining vehicles, deep underground. All of these things are uh, aut autonomous and need certain specific designer activity or designer connectivity. So, so that's that's how do we cope with that? So that's that's the technology that we're building in because we're saying to ourselves, as a provider of technology, that a big deal of what we do and achieve today is because of connectivity. There's very few things that we do in isolation anymore. We don't sit in a closed room yes. uh, without any connectivity. That's the first thing we do when we walk into a building or an airport or now a bus or a vehicle. It's like, what is the password? <laughs> how do I get? How do I get into the network? And so, part of our strategy is providing connectivity. So. And specifically, our okay, connectivity to hard to reach or unserviced areas, whether it's remote villages or unserviced communities or mobile mining. All of these, we have specific technologies. And one, one that is uh, very relevant at this moment uh, is Cradle Point because that's our mobile web. That's when we say we provide connectivity to trains and buses where people get on a bus or a train, they're traveling, they want Wi-Fi. How do you facilitate that on a, on a moving vehicle? We have trucks that have sensors on them uh, that's monitoring the engines and monitoring everything that, that's uh, mechanical. How do we connect that? This vehicle is moving around, moving underground. How do we accommodate branches that may be also remote, not big, but we need to connect them? And we need to provide services inside that branch. Again, uh, is that mobile WAN, uh, which we talk with Cradle. But. Wow. So, you, I mean, there's a lot of complexity. And, you know, you, you think that, you know, um, uh, getting connectivity onto a bus that, that's moving at, say, 60 or 70 kilometers an hour or on a highway, for example, that, that, that is, brings its own challenges, doesn't it? So, I mean, so you yeah. mentioned uh, Cradle Point a second ago and mobile WAN. Who is Cradle Point and what is Mobile WAN? Yeah, um, Cradle Point is part of Ericsson. And Ericsson, as you know, is a key player in the mobile network. Yes. So they've been in, in the mobile Swedish company, they've been in the mobile networking business for, for a long time. And they acquired Cradle Point a few years ago. And so that technology now is the is is 5G ready. And as soon as the the uh, as soon as all the, the legislation around 5G in this country is settled, uh, then, then we can break into it. So we run at 4G at the moment. And there are some instances of private 5G. You will see that happening a lot in, uh, in, in the world where big campuses, uh, military bases and so forth are building in turn inside their fences. They're building a 5G network to service their own internal, uh, inter internal users. Um, Cradle, Point, Cradle Point is one of the forerunners today in terms of building mobile WAN. And so what we're saying is instead of extending our wide area network to a branch office uh, or to a customer site, we are now saying that this branch office is a bus. <laughs> this branch okay. office is a truck or this branch office is a specific piece of machinery that's mobile uh, like we mentioned, mining is very relevant. Uh, this, this, this IoT or censoring is happening from a device that's moving around or being carried around or moved from site to site. So anything that is not static, um, that you want high uh, throughput connectivity to, managed, secure, high throughput connectivity to, uh, Cradle Point is the, is the technology that we use. Okay, that's a smart technology. And, 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 and I like the mm -hmm. fact that you mentioned it can switch from 4G to 5G, right? And Absolutely. I was going to say, you know, watch your language there because you almost, you know, you almost used a swear word called spectrum uh, just now. So, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but but uh, yeah. hopefully, but hopefully think, uh, you have to be a South African to enjoy that joke. Right? Yeah, exactly. But but I mean, hopefully we resolve that because as soon as you as soon as that spectrum is freed up and and you can you can have that five G easily available on specifically what we're talking about, it just makes a world of difference, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's uh, it's kind of symbiotic uh, you, how these things work. You make the bandwidth available, it gets consumed. Um, there's there's actually very little leftover spectrum anywhere in the world. Anywhere where spectrum is opened up, it's being consumed, and that paves the way for new applications to start functioning, for new people to do new things uh, over the network, for people to do things remotely more efficiently. So as soon as the spectrum opens up, it, it, like I said, it, it, cons it gets consumed very quickly. And that's why we're pushing for it. And yeah. there's a direct correlation between economic growth, uh, people passing school, uh, getting information in remote areas. How do we facilitate school children in remote areas if we don't have the spectrum to do it? Absolutely. It's, kind of, Absolutely. it's fundamental to what we're trying to achieve economically and socially in this country is that they open up the spectrum because once it's open, we can facilitate. Jacques Malherbe, the CTO at Axis. It's always great chatting to you, Jacques. Thank you for joining us on What's Next and explaining the next journey for Axis and the, and making a, a, explaining this technology in a way that I can now understand. It's always good to chat to you, Jacques. Wish you well and thank you for joining us. You're most kind, Aki. Thank, thank you and nice seeing you again as well. Take care. All, all the best.